Octane Loaded and in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two of XNLC Shoutcasting. This is our Thursday night, more for fun, relaxed, free play night. I'm joined by Land. This is his first time casting whatever. Hello, hello. Have you casted yes. before? <laughs> I've never casted before. So we're before. all going to judge him so hard. Yeah, and... judge me as harshly as humanly possible, and I will feel bad about it and cry later. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no cry. That got a little real. No, no, that got a little no, real. I'm not yeah, I, I just kind of like paused for a second. I was like, oh, oh, ow. Oof. Everyone just stopped talking. The, the like, feel you bad. just completely went silent. The feel bad. Uh, so, we're moving on. Team Land X. <laughs> Land is going to ban away try to move past that one. the Kled. We'll see what else they ban. These are going to be some targeted bans. Land, it's been forever since you played. Actually, this is a good question. When was the last time that you were like actively participating in Excellency? Hmm, maybe, maybe like five months ago. Sounds about right. It's been a while. I've been, I've just been playing a lot of like normal games with some friends of mine. I haven't really had the competitive heat. Ah, well that's quite all right. So some of these bands, um, you may not know who they're targeted at. So I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. The Kled banned away yeah. against Curry King. The okay. uh, LeBlanc, I believe, is banned away against Heal It Up. Yasuo being banned, it doesn't really matter who, as he's just kind of a strong champion, and it is also sure. interesting because Kill Yasuo, Boxy actually one-tricks him, so they kind of banned away their own champion there. Um, they also don't have, they're banning a ton of top laners, the Riven and the Darius, which I don't believe is actually targeted at the moment. Maybe the Riven against Smartest, but it seems like Curry King is going to be the top laner for the side of Team Water. So, interesting choice there. But Deadless, he loves his Yorick. When he's not playing Maokai, he's playing Yorick. So, he's going to lock it in. It is a comfort pick for him. He's feeling a lot better on it. He's even been talking recently about trying to maybe take it into ranked games. So, glad to see him playing that and not on the support of Maokai. Which also makes right. me feel good because it means that somebody else is taking that supportive role. And yeah. when someone elects to take the support role... Um, that's pretty awesome instead of somebody just getting shoved on support. Correct. Not to mention Yorick, also a very strong champion with Conquer, even though it was it was hit a little bit in the past couple patches. But um, you know, he can sustain pretty well, just I'm not so sure about against Olaf. Olaf just has a little bit more sustain built into the kit. So I'm curious to see how this matchup plays out. It seems like it's gonna be just as much skill based as it is pick based, so top lane definitely somewhere to watch. All right, looks like Heal It Up did have the Yasuo band against him in that mid lane, so they're trying to pinch his pool as well. Now, I know that Deadless is that iron player, and Curry King, I believe, is a plat player, so there's going to be a huge skill difference in that top lane. And Absolutely. because of that, I'd like to see whoever the jungler for Team Land is, they take a lot of time to focus on that top side. Olaf, one of those champions that, especially pre-6, can be um, a bit more easy to target. Even though he's more dangerous, because when he gets low health, he gets that extra attack speed, but um, he doesn't have any major escapes. There's no good way for him to flee if he gets in trouble, um, especially pre-6 when he doesn't have that Ragnarok. And so spending a little bit of time and focus on that top lane could be something for Team Land to focus on. It'll definitely come down to who the jungler is and just about their play style. You know, if they're actually willing to invest a lot of time towards that Iron 2 top laner or if they're willing to just leave him to try to, um, to try to just survive the lane phase against someone with that much of a skill difference and just, you know, try to help out the other lanes with the stronger players skill-wise from what they probably know about each other. Indeed. Yeah, I'm curious about that as well, my friend. So, going through the rest of these picks, Land is going to grab the Vayne and the Vigar. Most likely Vigar for the mid lane, but it could be supportive Vigar, as Heal It Up is known for his mid lane champions. Could also be <coughs> Sasha Hyena grabbing the Vigar for Heal It Up later. We'll find out as the Zaya and the Orianna locked in by Team Water. Uh, Orianna was good mid laner in his own right. Um, or Ice, sorry, a good mid laner in his own right. Likes to play the Zoe a lot. However, with Zoe's nerfs, it seems like Ice is going to instead be focusing on that Orianna, which I like because Orianna paired with the Olaf, dropping the ball on Olaf's head as he runs into the enemy team with Ragnarok, and then you drop the Shockwave, pulling everyone together for massive damage is a very nice initiation route for the side of Team Water. Absolutely. And not to mention the uh, the extra AoE that comes with Zaya, if they can pair that, if they can pair those two ultimates very well, just Zaya and Orianna's kits working together very well. 
for a team fight composition, so I like it a lot. All right, we'll see what Samaris decides to grab for his team. It looks like he's going that Velkaz, so it could be the support of Velkaz. Uh, definitely has a lot of poke potential. I was just talking with Velkush, if he's still hanging out in the Twitch chat, the other night about how it can be pretty oppressive. But if you take the right champion into Velkaz, one of my favorites being Leona, you just kind of absorb that initial pressure and dive in anyway. Stun him up. He's very squishy, very easy to take down, low mobility. His main asset is that he can just poke you from a crazy distance away. And who's better Absolutely. to gap close than master yi himself Oof. so the master yi paired could be with that alistar for the side of team land which i actually dig that as a whole now darth Vader could pick a different support but at the moment if he rolls with the alistar i love that possibility because you're gonna have a massive frontline take alistar can just stand in front of everyone he says olaf you're coming in well you know what i'm just gonna you know absorb that pressure i'm gonna knock you up uh hold on he's uh, olaf's ragnarok cancels all cc which that, should include the knockback as well. So yep. Alistar instead will be focusing on other people. Um, but it also gives this side of Team Land some type of initiation besides the Vigar wall. Because um, his E is, at the, if it hadn't been the Alistar, Vigar E would basically be the only way for Team Land to initiate any fights. Um, and so with that Alistar, they can use the headbutt knockup combination to s start it up, allow Vayne and Vigar to do their thing, play safe. You've got some pretty good peel with Yorick as well, and then Master Yi wrecking everything. Um, really curious to see Master or heal it up, play this Master Yi. I really like the uh, the whole disengage that uh, Team Land has drafted here. You've, you've got the Yorick wall, the, the Vayne condemn, the Vagar box the alistar knockup you just have a lot of disengage for the uh the engage comp that has been drafted but here by team water uh just assuming they can use the york box to wait out the uh the olaf ragnarok i'm sure they have a pretty good chance here at just avoiding any fights that they don't want to take and just trying to bring it towards their uh advantage yeah and one so, of the things for land they've got the super late game scaling vein uh oh, absolutely they've got they Vigar as well, as well like talk about late game powerhouse before we get too much further though with this analysis and I want to hear what team you think is actually going to win let's roll through the players and their champions for the side of right. team land we've got ourselves deadlifts playing that Yorick his favorite in the top lane Kane Kennedy taking the vein in the 80 carry roll Sasha Hyena on that Vigar in the mid lane taking that teleport for a quick recall and back heal it up grabbing the master G for the jungle and last but definitely not least Darth Vin taking the Alistar in the supportive role. And on Team Water, we've got Curry King on the Olaf top lane, Excellency Ice on the Oriana in the mid lane, Doc Shocker on Velkaz in the support, supporting Smartest 2 on Zaya with Jax in the jungle. Uh, played by Kyo Yasuo. Apologies. That's all right. So give it to me. What do you think the te what team do you think is going to win and why? I think that as long as they can execute their team comp well enough, as long as they can use every champion that they have to the, the most potential that they can possibly get these champions with, I think that probably Team Water is going to be able to take it. What do you think? Um, Team Water is going to take it. Okay, I actually wasn't expecting that. Talk about their, their advantages very, just briefly. I want to I hear your thoughts before I share share mine. Well, just with the, uh, you know, the engage of Olaf being able to avoid any CC, being able to run in with the Oriana ball, and then when that shockwave gets popped, watching the Velkaz with the disintegration ray and the Zaya with her ultimate, and just Zax and Zach, or Jax anywhere on the back line, stunning up all of the carries in the back while the uh, engage is going on, I think that they can probably pop everybody pretty quickly. So as long as they can, as long as they can execute that perfectly, or at least semi-perfectly in every engage, I think they can definitely take it here. Okay, so you're saying that for the side of Team Water, their 5v5 
fight team fight is pretty nuts. And I agree Absolutely. that Oriana, Zaya, even the Velkaz disintegration ray can really wreck a team in the 5v5. Now, to counter that for the side of Team Land, you've got so much pick potential. Master Yi, if there's one opponent, Alpha Strike, double auto attack, you're gone. Pretty easy when it comes to the squishier members of the Zaya, Velkaz, even the Oriana, if Master Yi starts to get ahead. As well as Vigar's wall basically says, sorry, you're stunned up, there's not much you can do, we're going to be able to pick you off. I agree that Team Water probably has a bit of an easier composition, but I think that Team Land is going to get a bit of an edge. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if Land gets enough of an edge, they could hold the lead enough that they survive through the 5v5 teamfight stage until they get to the late game. So really, when it comes down to it, as you said, it's about these teams, how well they play their composition strengths. Team Water, Absolutely. they want to survive the laning phase until they hit that team fight stage 5v5 get a bunch of kills feel really good and win off of that we see so many times where teams get a 5v5 fight that's good but they can't get objectives they can't push in for turrets they can't get a baron off of it and so they start to fall apart for the side of Landex, it's try to get their champions like the Yi absolutely as far ahead as possible in the early game. Get Vayne a kill or two, even if you've got Vigar roaming to the bottom lane to make something of that happen. And get your advantages early, and then don't ever 5v5 fight in the mid game. Like, just, just <laughs> hands off the, the keyboard, don't 5v5, even if you have to give over a dragon or two, it's fine. As long as you for don't sure. lose inhibitors, wait until you hit that 25. 5, 27 minute mark when your Vayne and Vigar come online and they'll just win the fights afterwards for you. Absolutely. Well, we will just have to see how these teams can play their compositions and play their champions as we start to get into the game at 98% for me. Yep, sitting at 98% as well. We're just kind of chilling, watching the loading <laughs> screen. Some nice skins are like Yorick, SKT1 yep. Vayne, Omega Squad Vigar, Golden Alistar, not a common skin you see. Battlecast, Belkaz. Cool, Go ahead. Cool loading screen here. I like what the, I like the new update that they did. Well, both teams uh, pretty to stare at. have one champion that isn't wearing a skin, Master Yi and the Zaya. So we don't have advantage when it comes to the Skinnergy or skin to win war. Um, this, normally this. speaking, you want you want to have one team that's got all five skins, and they say we're going to dominate this game. If you got all five skins, automatically gives you a bit of an edge. Either way, we are into game number one. Team Land taking on Team Water. Which one is stronger? Will the Water slowly chew away Land, or will Land wait for the right opportunity and burst up like a volcano and with lava wash away everything, <laughs> evaporate all of Team Water's chances? at this game we'll find out right now as both teams head into the rift Welcome to rift. do you like my uh my little joke there i sure did <laughs> i've been working Looks on like it team water wants to initiate a invade coming from the bottom tribrush jungle doesn't look like anyone is going to be there to spot that out so could be a little bit of action going on here in the first few minutes oh of the game. it's a two-man invade we got an invade from the side of land as well they're gonna just check with a little bit of vision immediately back away but heal it up might be in trouble he's the only one heal left alive here no one's here immediately to jump on him yet, but that's going to be Team Water making a splash first, getting a little bit of damage on to heal it up. They're going to continue to throw those axes by that Olaf slowing advantage. out the Yi. Let's see what they can do. A nice poke from the Velkos as well. First blood over to Smartest, which is actually one of the best champions you could have it on, but hold on. Nice check from Doc Shocker Ooh. into the brush as well. That was a face check, but when you got lasers, you can face check from a mile away and still feel okay. And we got three members of Team Land trapped here for the moment. Kane Kennedy taking a little bit of damage. Damage. The counter strike from the Jax. Not gonna find Sasha Hyena as he's gonna flash over the wall. Alistar has a nice two man knockup. That's his only skill at the beginning of the game. The Vayne dodges away from the Q from Doc Shocker, and that will be the split apart for the moment as Samartis 2 wants to continue to maybe chase in onto Kane Kennedy, trying to find advantages here and there. Ice gonna take a little bit of poke from Sasha Hyena. Kane Kennedy still on the run. Samartis 2, what are you doing? Walking into the brush, gets a couple auto attacks onto Darth Vin. That's the one auto attack from Vayne for the uh, Master Yi heal it up, who did respawn and go to his own red buff, picking it up. And Darth Vin still playing with Smartis, gets another knockup, has to run away. He's just kind of wasting the Zaya's time, but Zaya finds a kill here. That'll be two kills. Darth Vin gonna be in trouble, walks around the corner. 
solo kill by Zaya. Beautiful. <laughs> Looks like Kill Yasuo might be able to jump over. Hold on, the Alpha Strike and the heal used by Smartest 2. I think that auto attack is going to be enough and now heal it up. He doesn't. Oh, he tries to flash into the brush, but oh, Kill Yasuo is on him. Brush, but misses it. Oh. oh, that is unfortunate. And a three kill advantage going over to Team Water for that invade. I think it was very well executed by. Um, my team water they're just using the numbers advantage just chasing oh. down the Yi, not afraid to fight at all and overall coming out on top of that invade so very well done by them and if heal it up had taken a you know two more brain cells he might have processed <laughs> that kill yasuo had to flash the wall to join the fight yeah, it's a jack so sure, he had to flash the sure dragon pit wall to, to get there and so Yi didn't even need to do any juking or any any flashy plays he just had to flash the wall he would have been fine would have gotten yes. out alive, but either way, he tries the fashion, fancy play, fails it, and goes down as a result, leading for a 3-1 for Team Water, as they are definitely maybe showing off that uh, Team Land might be a little washed up, if you will. Right. Dennis in that top lane, taking a lot of damage. He finds a nice trap, though. Curry King finds the Q and throws the last axe necessary. Still, the Olaf was trapped in a wall, taking a lot of damage. And Yi is going to be around the corner. He's got that red buff as well. So, you know, he doesn't. He's got his own blue buff. Uh, he's level Curry. 2 against the level 4 of Curry King. I think Curry King doesn't care. He's going to try to fight it out. Alpha Strike dropping him low. Nice double attack there from the passive of the Master Yi. Finishes off Curry King to get a good trade in kills. Takes heal it up very low, but he can't quite pull it off with the Olaf lifesteal, unfortunately. Alstar Alpha in the bottom lane finds a knockup onto Smartest. Kane Kennedy getting a little bit of damage, but this is only a level 3 vein. She's not going to do that much. Smartest is well low. And Doc Shocker is just continuing to poke away. He's got two potions as well to heal up, but it's really going to be on Smartest. How much health can this Zaya deal with as Darth Vin is seeing what he can do? Go ahead. No flashes up for any for the jungler or the bottom lane so quite some interesting plays that are possible down there everyone used their flashes during the fight the only people them up are the top laners and only one of the mid laners so some are advantage going over to team water it seems like curious to see what they try to do just with all of the fiestas going on in the uh in the jungle Brittany, thank you so much for that uh, raid of three. I, really, if you raid with one, if you raid with 55, I don't care. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you for your support. How was your stream? How was your stream? I know you've been streaming a lot recently. I'm trying to check in when I can, doing a little bit of lurking while I'm at work as the engage at the bottom lane from Darth Van finding a knockup onto Smartest underneath the turret. Root coming down onto the Alistar. Smartest getting a little bit more poke damage for us, and Darth Van did have to play a bit more on the wiser side. Yes, he around the corner, heal it up, focusing on the Krugs instead of this fight in the bottom lane. Dark Shocker low on mana, keep that in mind. As he is going to look for the engage, Ken Kennedy trying to reposition the condemned, not going to connect with the wall though. So smartest going to start the auto attacks, the knockup though, and ignite onto that Zaya. She should fall. A nice clean kill as the vein is going to pick it up. Ken Kennedy now wanted to chase and exhaust use on to heal it up. Doc Shocker will walk away. That is a lot of those summoner spells down in the bottom lane for Team Water. Yes, sir. Vein's flash coming back up now, so she can try her hardest to make. Some inter an interesting place here. Stop the back. The oh, Curry King trapped in the wall. Oh, that. Oh, Deadless is trying to get the heal off of the Q. Oh, hold on. Flash for Flash. King Kennedy can't find the last auto attack, though, in the turret blade, shot. Cannot finish off that auto attack. Takes a turret shot and goes dangerously low, but they both get out scot free. Unfortunately, the Flash that just came back up for Vayne having to go back down. Trading it for Velkos, though, could be a little bit worse, in my opinion. But yeah, a lot of interesting plays being made bottom lane. A very nice gank by Master Yi there to uh, to clean up the, uh, the push by Team Water. Still a very interesting game so far. Yeah, three kills, two <laughs> five thousand gold lead for Team Water. There is that Mountain Drake that is the first Drake on the map. Curry King going to complete a second plate on that top side. Deadless definitely struggling, but you could see how close some of those fights are. However, as the game progresses, Deadless being this low on farm. Look at that, 17, 18 farm to the 42 of Curry King will definitely have his work cut out for him. And I probably would greatly suggest leave the York as a split pusher in the side lane because he's really just going to need all the time in the world to truly come online, find some of his own items. He's just going to need the time to sit in a side lane, slow push the wave, don't go too aggressive, don't go shoving it into turrets or anything crazy. Ice in that mid lane, though, flashes Ice the flashing. wall and up, taking a turret shot. However... 
That flash being burned, heal it up, can back, and just repeat later as the team of water trying to secure this mountain drake. Jax and Velkaz on it. Alistar, I thought for a second was going to walk in and drop a war. Darth is actually going to walk around behind, but now he's going to find himself caught between a bunch of members. Instead, he's been engaging onto the Zaya. That's much better than being caught Spartus. between three. Finds a stun, but the Vayne is just focusing on farming. So Darth Vader is one of the wanting the Zaya at the moment, and he is a losing. Flash for flash at the moment. He'll use as well from Zaya, but Kane Kennedy now coming in, getting a little bit of a cutlass slow. A couple more auto attacks might be enough. Condemn doesn't catch the Zaya into the wall. He is here, though. If he gets in range for an Alpha Strike, that might be it. As Made in the Mist called into the top lane, the Olaf, though, just going to knock it down. And now he can walk this in onto Deadless. What does he even care? Just going to run Deadless down. Not worried about surviving damage from him, just life stealing off of it and finishes it off with the E there. Very nice fight top lane. Not sure what um not sure what King Kennedy was thinking there, just leaving Darth Finn to fight alone like that. He did some good damage, but he just wasn't able to finish it up. Hey, just... when you're the ADC, you gotta farm your minions. It's all very about true. those minions. Well, Smartest is might not be all about the minions if they're dying, but Smartest is probably gonna die for his effort going forward. Darth Finn's gonna find a nice knock up now. The TP coming in from the old lock. He should be able to take down this Alistar without too much difficulty. King Kennedy gonna look for the condemn. He's dropped out Trucker extremely low. He needs the last auto attack. There it is. Good moves by King Kennedy. Will still fall to the Olaf that is just murdering everyone at this point. Five, one, and one. Gonna back with 1500 gold in his inventory. And Olaf is the problem for Team Land right now. Indeed. Unfortunately for Team Water, Smartest 2 couldn't find an assist on the Vayne kill. However, he did find one on the Alistar. Oh, Ice in trouble in that mid lane. Dropped oh. low. The last auto attack comes through as the Order on Shield will fall off the barrier. Excuse me, fell off. And nice moves by Sasha Hyena, but that is the Vigar Press R win fight 1v1. Very true. Are everyone is just farming now. Uh, bottom lane is returning around the same time. Jax and Master Yi might find each other in the jungle, but it looks like Jax is just going to skirt around that, or around his own pink ward. Maybe he wants to fight for the Scuttle Crab, but it looks like he's willing to just give it up as he knows that Yorick is in range to intercept. Yeah, York opts to go for the Krugs instead. Still down a lot of CS in that mid bottom lane, though. Smart is going to be stunned up once again. King Candy getting a lot of damage. There's the ultimate out from the Zaya, though. That's going to reset the fight. It means the Alistar will fall down. Now King Kennedy needs to back away. Doc Shocker still stepping forward aggressively. Knows that a couple of levels, or a couple of spells piled on top of each other with a disintegration ray should be more than enough to take out this vein and shoves her right back underneath her bottom lane turret. I want to talk about the CS lead going on for bottom lane for just a moment. Even though Zaya has been making these very aggressive, very up in your face um, attempts and taking these very aggressive fights, he still managed to keep the CS lead over Vayne, which I think is coming in handy to help win this bottom lane. Even though Master Yi's been down bottom lane a few more times, I believe, than Jax has, he's still just keeping this in advantage bottom lane. And it looks like. Belka's not going to get anything with the life form disintegration ray. Oh, he even drops extremely low himself. I think he took two turret shots for all that trouble. That top lane turret finally going to fall, which means Deadless might have a bit of breathing room in the mid lane. Heal it up. Going to make a trade onto Ice. Should be able to pick up the kill. The shockwave stopped by the alpha strike from the Yi. So nice. King Kennedy walking into the cube from the Velkaz, though. Can't get much there as the turret in the top side going to fall. Darth been running away from minions trying to survive use himself. Of the ultimate there stopped by the Velkaz with the Q and not able to get anything for it bottom lane however it was more than made up for in the mid lane fight Sasha Hyena gonna be in trouble probably going to fall drops the E the flash, flash from Curry King, King underneath King. the turret Makes and kill Yasuo actually secures the kill by topping in with that leaping strike and I wanted to comment very briefly and say that Yorick in this top lane, I think the best thing for him was losing that turret because now he can just slow farm the minions, take his time. He's got the entire wave to slowly walk back to that enemy team turret. Once he gets to the river, back and reset one more time and repeat that. Because sometimes when you're failing in lane, the best thing that happens is you lose your turret so that you can just calm things down and catch back up in CS. Absolutely. Smartest 2 taking another very aggressive fight here, just running up as far as he possibly can onto Vayne. I don't think he realized that Alistar was there. Gonna However, get knocked up, throws out the ultimate. Down. We'll see if the Feather Recall is gonna do anything. It won't, but still gets the auto attack down onto the Vayne in time. And now Darth Vince dropped down the ultimate. That is a On very a tanky Alistar, but not tanky enough. 
beautiful fight taken by Team Waters. Bottom lane, Master Yu running up. Uh, Pops challenging Smite. Looks like he's going to be able to take him down. Dodges yes. the knock up with the Alpha Strike, and Master Yu takes two people for his bottom lane's revenge. Yeah, beautiful stuff. This Yi timing does Alpha Strike so well. Deadless, Absolutely. just go ahead and back away. Just back away. Let Olaf have the farm. It's not worth fighting over. Then now he's gonna get going punished. To fight him right in the minion in the minion wave. Pops the Ragnarok. Probably didn't even need it, but it does help him out to finish the fight there. And Deadless taken down once again. Infernal Drake started up both though by Team Land. They're trying to push Kilyaso off of this Drake as Isaac is gonna show up as well. Join the fight, uses oh. his orb on Kilyaso, and that should be Team the Jack Water. securing it for the side of Secures. Team Water. Second Drake, Ice in trouble though, drops to the Vigar, oh. and now Kilyaso hopping over the wall. However, gonna get knocked up by Darthman. Should try the head, but this oh, Jack's into the enemy the team. Attack. Nice stun as well. Stun up by the oh, Vigar. CC'd for forever! And Darthvin picks up his first kill, though probably accidentally. He's gonna join Sasha High. Inside the dragon pit once more. Smartest trying to throw out a little bit more damage. Doesn't have the feather storm up. Keep that in mind. Is Kane Kennedy going to jump Smartest forward? This integration ray over the wall. It's on to Sasha Hyena, however, with no stacks, which means the flash used by Smartest to get over the wall survives for now. Let's take a look at the summoner spells here. No flashes up on the side of Team Water, as opposed to two up on the side of Team Land. Unfortunately, a lot of flashes having to be blown during that last fight and the fight before just to escape. Oh, the uh, smartest two in trouble. GLP Hold on. Exhaust down. used on to Sasha Hyena. Can Voice just get a couple more auto attacks. <laughs> Darthman's actually the one who secures it. Now Doc Shocker can chase down this Alistar. He's not that tanky, and Olaf's gonna just walk in <laughs> onto the Vigar. Goes godlike. A1 and 2. And Team Land. Looks like another tower here for Team Water as well. So doing a very good job of pushing these advantages, even though they sometimes lose the fights, they're still doing a great job at securing these objectives or uh, winning back objectives in the case of the dragon. So advantage still looks like <laughs> Kyoyasu almost walks past Master Yi. Deal it up with trying to finish the off the, yeah, the Rift Herald. However, the Alpha Strike, I think the Counter Strike finds this down and kill. He also finds the kill, but now Deadless gets his own kill. He's worth gold again, ladies and gentlemen. Deadless is going to be trying to finish off the Rift Herald. Ice is here, though. Who's going to actually find that last hit Deadless because it's enemy's the game? Flash. The fail flash over the wall from Deadless. He's going to instead try to focus on the Rift Herald. He's going to be hit by the deadly plumage of the Zaya. However, the turret, the Rift Herald still not gone. Somebody's got to finish it off. I think Ice actually killed it. However, nobody's been able to pick it up just yet. So now the defense here from Team Land is this integration ray gonna drop the Sasha Hyena low, but nobody finds the kill and Kane Kennedy comes from the side lane. Beautiful double kill and no one there to pick up the Rift Herald eye as Curry King is solo pushing this bottom lane turret. He'll get it. This Not even turret. worried about those tower shots. Just gonna go ahead and take it down. Now the mid lane turret though by Team Land going to be started. However, they don't have the minion wave unless Darth Ben pops the ultimate. They're not gonna be able to take it down. He doesn't have it. So they're going to grab their own mini wave, start it up again. But Jax is actually walking in and yep. just... Jax grabs the Herald. Uh. <laughs> okay, look, when you take down the enemy team, you got to actually defend the Herald until it's gone. At least drop True. a ward. At least drop a ward, because Kilyasa literally just walked in and grabbed it. Ooh, flash from Kilyasa him to get this done on flash. the counter. Strike Dodge Sash Hyena w. dropping low. The leaping strike might be enough, so Kilyasa will pick up one. And once again, the 1v1 between these two. An alpha strike from Heal It Up once again will secure him the kill as he's dropped the ultimate. Moving in onto Doc Shocker now. Alpha strike Ooh, is one. Flashes flash the knockup as the well. Knockup. That was beautiful. This game is two running right into Master Yi. I don't think he wins that. No, oh, Smartest 2 going to be in trouble. Heal it up. Gets healed by the Alistar as well. And now Curry King he tries to flash in to finish off Heal it up. Instead, he'll retarget target onto Darthvin as the Alistar was unable to get over the wall with the Blast Cone. So... Popping the BM. Mirac using the movement speed to chase down Alistar. This Unfortunately, he was not quite able to catch the Master Yi with the flash, but he will take the Alistar's life gladly instead. This game is coming down to, can Yi or Olaf kill the other team first? Because at this point, both te both of those players are kind of trying to 1v9. And both are doing a really good job. Is Kane Kennedy going to be dropping low, probably dying to Curry King. He gets it slow. Here comes Heal it up, though. He's got the double buff. Alpha Strike comes in, and the Yi gets the shutdown gold. Could you have a more perfect turn of events as Ice drops in the mid lane. Deadless picks up his second kill of the game, showing up in perfect time to join Sasha Hyena and push that one out. Excellent stuff from Team Land. They're going to tie up the kills. They're down 2,000 gold. 
But they still got ways to get back into this game. That they do. Yasuo here to um, to protect the tower, just finish off the uh, push bot that Yorick can spawn and finish off the creeps. Unfortunately, he's going to be captured by the Vagar. Able to get out of that all right. A little bit of fancy footwork required in order to avoid the Vagar. Bomb you, of death. you can see though from this Vagar that event horizon becoming really problematic for the team heal it up gonna try to 1v1 smartest in the bottom lane you're just gonna walk right past however gets rooted up and smartest gonna take oh. all the time in the world for those auto attacks heal it up still on the run turns around knowing that he's probably still gonna die as Darth Vader gonna go down in the mid lane they took down the turret deadless gonna be in trouble though because all of his walk right back in shockwave flash by the uh, uh, Vigar however the rest of his team is going to fall Oriana did go down though. Vigar was able to secure that, I believe, with his ultimate. Yes, but... he used the ultimate for it. Smartest gonna shove in the bottom wave, and he is gonna accidentally almost run right into Vagar. Fortunately for him, they do manage to skirt around each other. And it looks like they're going to drop the Rift Herald into the mid lane and just see what they can get off of it. Main trading a tower top lane, though I'm not sure that's where the effort should be focused right about now, as mid lane is getting sieged with Rift Herald's help. I don't know that Vayne would be able to stop these three members from the side of Team Water pushing into this mid lane. Even Sasha Hyena probably should have backed to get a little bit more mana and defended the inhibitor turret. However, Heal It Up is joined the fight a little bit. Alpha strikes to a minion. Immediately walks away. Two turrets for Team Water again, but this time in the mid lane instead of the bottom lane. There are going to be five turrets total at this point as it's three for Team Land. But as we said, these team fights continue to just go all over the place. Mountain That's Drake going to be started and secured by Team Water. Third Drake of the game. Three Drakes for none in favor of Team Water. Baron coming up in about 50 seconds. So I'd like to see some um, emphasis be put on controlling that objective next. This dragon has just gone down. Well, you can see all the control wards that Team Water have invested on that top side. You know, two almost on that river, and one was in Team Land's top side jungle. However, it was cleared by Heal It Up, who's starting to get a little bit crazy. Finish off the Rage Blade, maybe looking for a Blade of the Ruined King next. Not exactly sure that that's the best choice, except for maybe Olaf, but. Uh, or maybe to add some extra slow, but either way, definitely carry potential. And again, it's really all about trying to just keep surviving until this Vayne and uh, Vigar come online. Because as the game scales Absolutely. later and later, Vayne's just going to be able to kite and walk through the Olaf. As Sasha Hyena gonna try oh, to 1v1, smartest. smartest, and the stun still comes through. Event Horizon just enough to catch him out, oh. and the ult comes through. Perfect finish, and now Deadless gonna show up just in time to drop the box around Yasuo, defending his Vigar. Beautiful plays there. There are three members of Team Water pushing on the top side is two Curry from King Team gonna Land are gonna Vayne. try to come into this bottom side. Can Kennedy backing Misses away. The the Fortunately, it goes down to Vayne. Very beautifully played by Team Land there. Yeah, the Condemn didn't actually work because it was just before the Ragnarok actually fell off, but all it did was give King Kennedy another reset for those uh, empowered auto attacks, the Silver Bolts, and that's what we're talking about. As the game goes later, you'll see that damage just tear through Olaf's health because it's true damage. It doesn't matter how much damage you do. If Vayne's doing true damage and you can't get on her, she will tear you apart. Absolutely. Very well played by Vayne and um, Darth Vin in the bottom lane there to kind of put a stifle on Curry King's Olaf right now. Puts him up to three deaths as Team Land slowly but surely takes the win. And they are just shy of tying up this gold where originally they were down 3,000 gold. Now they're only a couple hundred down, so that is good things from Team Land. They've kind of been able to stifle this game. They've stopped the bleeding. Team Water has kind of lost a couple of those small skirmishes. And again, that's what we talked about, is that it's skirmish favored for Team Land. It's 5v5 favored for Team Water. So the first Baron is going to be scary if Team Water do group as five members around it. They've got Olaf slip pushing in the bottom lane at the moment. Olaf does have his teleport up, but I have yet to see them effectively utilize his teleport. I think he might have done one nice teleport bottom lane, but uh, as far as it come, as far as five v fives go, I haven't seen them effectively utilize that Olaf's teleport or their team fight composition. Yorick taking a lot of damage here. He's actually gonna go down 
to the life form disintegration ray by Velkaz. Gonna get a nice pick there. So it's bad oh, wow. to lose a teammate, but that is one ultimate down on the enemy team. However, Viger's gonna have to teleport to the bottom lane teleport. turret to defend as Olaf is pushing it in. Not exactly the best champion to try to deal with team an Olaf split push. Water gonna start the Baron here with Master Yi still hovering around. Hopefully for them they can stop this Master Yi if he does try to disrupt it, but it doesn't look like they have any vision, so... But they don't have time either, that's going to be the Baron down under 800, and the Zaya is actually the one who secures it, also smited by the Jax, and now they're going to chase it in on to heal it up. Looks like they're willing to just let him go and take the Baron for their troubles. They're in a top wave, and probably going to reset here. Honestly, that Very might nice. have been the best choice by Yi, because it's better to just let them have the Baron and try to turtle, than to Absolutely. dive in and just die. If the Alistar had been there, I think that fight could have maybe be gone to team land just because Alistar CC plus E's damage at this point yeah. might have been enough, but they didn't have the Alistar in position. He had roamed towards the bottom side, which I think was a poor choice. And uh, so they lose the Baron. We'll see how well though they can defend against this Baron. Olaf gonna start on the uh, Thorn Mail next, trying to put a damper on Vayne, just absolutely melting him with the true damage there. So I like the pickup. Um, also going to give him some healing reduction for the uh, the life steal being built by Yorick, Vayne, and Master Yi. So like that pick a lot or that pickup a lot by uh, Curry King. Deadless the run, glory. run, go in on Deadless. run! <laughs> uh, you can't escape a righteous glory plus Ragnaroking Olaf. I think even no, if Deadless had run, he still would have died anyway. There's not much you can do in that situation. Other than Most likely, it looks like Team Water collapsing on the Infernal Drake now. Gonna use the priority they have and just allow Kill Yasuo on the Jax to die alone in the top lane. So that's a pick for a pick top laner for Jungler. Fortunately, yeah. or unfortunately for Team Land, it looks like Olaf is gonna be able to just run it right through the bottom lane. Probably gonna be able to pick up a tower here with the Baron buff minions. Master Yi recalls to try and stop him, and Vagar also shows up. He does manage to grab the tower. Unfortunately, don't know how well it's going to work for him to get the inhibitor. So and the Alistar and Vayne were kind of out of position to defend the mid lane tur inhibitor turret, so it's going to fall as well. Event Horizon just a bit too short to catch anyone, so they have lost inhibitor turrets in the mid and bottom side. Deadless is once again trying to stop uh, Curry King from pushing on this Olaf, but I don't think he's doing that much. And again, I don't think it's the right target to put against this Olaf. If you sent Vayne and Alistar to deal with him and then 4v3'd in the mid lane with the Yorick, that might be better. But at, at this point, uh, Vayne is really the only one that can do anything against this Olaf. And with the Baron buff there, they're able to open up a nice 3.5 thousand gold lead in favor of Team Water. So a lot of objectives being secured by that Baron buff and a lot of pressure being placed onto Team Land's base right now just for, um, because of all the all of the picks that Olaf has been able to grab and that the other team has been able to grab, specifically on this Yorick. Unfortunately, Deadless having kind of a rough game down almost 100 CS to his lane opponent. Uh, yeah, you, all I can say is that you hate to see it. You hate to see it and it hurts. However... Team Water, while they may be 3,000 gold ahead, they've been 3,000 gold ahead before. And when they've made some mistakes, Team Land has been able to capitalize off of those and actually make something happen. Despite that, it's though, it may feel King. like... Has to drop the Ragnarok, though, to get away from the spooky ghost slow. Deadless actually flashing in, dropping everything, chasing Curry yeah. King out of their jungle. However... This time he's brought some company with him. He's got the Vigar there as well. Yes, Vigar's presence able to stop Deadless from just being 1v1 again. However, it is a numbers disadvantage in the mid lane as the oh, rest of the Feather Storm not going to catch Darth Vane, but a two man counter strike from Yasuo. Going to stun up King Kennedy, and now that is going to be Vayne following, which should be Team Water. They've been able to give themselves a nice mountainous advantage over Team Land, and they yeah, are they going have. to grab the inhibitor in the mid lane. They probably can yeah, push in for the victory in. as well. They don't have Baron buff anymore. It has faded away. We'll see what Heal It Up can do. As Smartest is down under half. This is the time that Heal It Up Master says, let's go in. Gonna He's gonna, gonna jump go in first. Alpha stun. Strike. He hits the stun at just at the end of the duration of the Counter Strike. Just manages to take Master Yi out, only trading his life and not their AD carries. Unfortunately, Team Water probably gonna have to back off here unless they can find a pick onto this Hagar. 
which um, or the York. <laughs> and and the big R. Okay. <laughs> and there's an Olaf who just walks in. He was focusing on the bottom lane and inhibit Arcane Kennedy to see if he can defend it as the Curry King gonna back away from the inhibitor for the moment until the rest of the team joins in and now they're gonna take it down. Darth Vin, you can find all the knockups you want onto the Zaya, but you've got no damage to deal anything else. Doc Shocker drops low, King Kennedy Darth seeing if he can tumble in, in, but it's just a bait! as they are waiting for Curry King to grab that Ragnarok so he can take the vein down. He should be able to take down Darth Vin as well. He leaves it to his team. Doc Shocker gonna take down the Ignite, finishes him off, so Alistar gets one more before Actually, the end of the game as in. Heal It Up gonna walk into his own demise, takes down the Zaya, but should lose Able the game. He's actually going in for Ice as well. He's been able to pick up two. <laughs> he says, Curry King, you may 1v9 win this game, but know that I will take your team down as we fall. A beautiful last ditch effort by Master Yi there just to just to grab a couple more kills for the KDA before the game has to end. But overall Team Water is going to take it for themselves. Alright, that is going to be game number two in the books. Team Land. They had a couple of moments that things were looking pretty good, but in the end. It just goes to prove that no matter what you do, water will wear you down. And in the end, Team Water came out with the victory. So, run through honorable mentions and MVPs. You want to do the honor of running through, running through for the losing team, who you consider to be the honorable mention and MVP. Sure. Probably going to give the honorable mention to Sasha Hyena. He was using that Vagar cage very effectively to zone off people and capture people inside of it. Unfortunately, he just it just didn't help when people can just avoid avoid the cage with using the center of it and fancy feet around the, the meteor. He tried his best. He got a couple picks here and there, but uh, overall, not a, not a uh, fruitful effort. And obviously... The uh, MVP gonna have to go to heal it up on the Master Yi. You know, he was jumping, he was getting a lot of kills, especially in the early game where he was very present in every lane, not only the bottom lane, but specifically the bottom lane. Um, he started to open up a couple of good leads for himself um, and his team, but unfortunately, again, not able to make it a fruitful effort. All right, for the winning team, I mean, it's pretty easy. Everyone can tell that, obviously, uh, Doc Shocker was an absolute monster. He's going to win both the honorable mention and the MVP. <laughs> no one else gets anything. He's the sole carry, 1v9 Doc Shocker. What a monster. What a champion. No, uh, he, he went Rylas Crystal Scepter on, on this <laughs> Velkaz support. That's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, for actual uh, honor mentions and MVPs, and once again, uh, Spotify, what are you doing? What are you doing, Spotify? Just randomly pauses for like no reason whatsoever. Uh, I'll figure it out eventually, but. Um, all right, for the honorable mention, we're going to give it over to Smartest. Uh, despite dying a whole bunch of times, when you look at the lineup, Heal It Up, Sasha, Hyena, all that sort of stuff, it's a pretty scary lineup on the enemy team. We explained some of those deaths, but I like the positioning um, and the fact that he, towards the end of the game, was using his squishiness as the baiting tool to pull Heal It Up or pull Kane Kennedy into fights that they didn't want. And it's kind of one of those things that you look like a squishy mor you know, morsel for the enemy team to try to grab and used his own life as that baiting tool as well as picking up a bunch of kills. And then for the MVP, it's definitely not going to Curry King because he's obviously smurfing. What a master player and smurfing in these games. We don't deal with that sort of stuff. Get out of here, Curry. We don't. No, I'm kidding. Curry King did fantastically. Uh, to be fair, he's plat. Versus an iron. So just keep that in mind. But it's more about his rotation to other lanes, his commitment to the split push, which forced Team Land to continuously split apart, <laughs> send people to try to deal with him, which he could either solo or just back away from and let the rest of his team win the numbers fight. It was also the reason why they eventually got Baron. Good stuff from him for Team Water. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a very quick break and get right back for game number three. However, I think we can run another Marbles game in the meantime. What do you guys feel? What do you guys feel? Feeling like another Marbles game? I'm feeling like another Marbles game. So we'll be right back with game number three. Land, just chill here if you want to cast, because I think I would love to have you in game number three as a cast. And by think, I mean well, I, I know that I'd love to have you. 
<laughs> I would love to cast. However, I'm gonna mute while you play the Marvels game because I don't.